Hello, I'm Father Louis Skurdy, and I welcome you to Friends of the Word, the weekday word. And today is not just the weekday word, today is the feast of the presentation of Jesus in the temple as light of the world, sometimes called Candlemas Day, and we'll be blessing candles to celebrate that. Thank you for joining us, and pass this on to your family and friends, and let me hear from you. Father Louis Skurdy at Hotmail.com. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today is the feast of the, the presentation of our Lord in the temple, and we begin Mass by the blessing of our candles. My brothers and sisters, 40 days have passed since the joyful feast of the Nativity of Jesus. So today ends the Christmas season, although you wouldn't know it. Today is a blessed day when Jesus was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph. Outwardly, he was fulfilling the law, but in reality, he was coming to meet his believing people. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, Simeon and Anna came to the temple. Enlightened by the same Holy Spirit, they recognized the Lord and confessed him with exaltation. So let us now, gathered by the Holy Spirit, proceed to the house of the Lord to encounter Jesus Christ. There and here we find him and recognize him in the breaking of the bread until he reveals himself in glory. We ask the Lord to bless us as we use these candles throughout the year and probably on the feast of St. Blaise in commemoration of the light that Jesus has brought into our lives. Father, we ask your blessings upon these candles and all the candles of our church that we use each day to celebrate our faith at Mass or in honoring the saints. In your goodness, Father, be with us as we gather in prayer. May the offerings that we present to you, Lord, offer a humble, contrite heart as we gather in your majesty, that just as your only begotten Son, Jesus, was presented this day in the temple, in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you, each of us, with minds and hearts made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever. Amen. a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people, Israel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer sacrifice of two pair of turtle doves or a pair of pigeons, in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Jerusalem and all of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was with him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in spirit into the holy temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what he said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. There was another prophetess, Anna, 
the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years and having lived seven years with her husband after their marriage, she was a widow until now and she was 84 years old. She never left the temple, but worshiped day and night with fasting and prayer. Coming forward at that time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about this child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Israel. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God rested upon him. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people call this Groundhog Day. We call it Candlemas Day. And I'm, I'm afraid to say you probably knew more about Candlemas, excuse me, of Groundhog Day than Candlemas Day. But it's our faith. We gather as a family and we tell stories about who we are as what's being written today in the scriptures. One of the old traditions, and it's kind of comical, of Candlemas Day had to do exactly what we do on Groundhog Day. If the sun is shining on Candlemas Day, we have eight more weeks of winter. So it's shining today, so get ready, folks, wrap up. If it's true, it's a tradition, it's not authentic, it's not real, it's not dogma, it's not our faith, it's a little tradition that comes out of uh, different cultures. But Candlemas Day commemorates blessing of candles, we say, and as you know, we use candles in church all the time as, as uh, prayers before our statues, going up to God. We use them at the altar to enlighten the altar and the, and the sanctuary. And candles were also used on the feast of St. Blaise. And that's a whole other feast that you'll get that in a few days. But the same candles that we bless today will be the candles that will be used to bless people's throats as we come forward on the feast of St. Blaise, or sometimes we do it on Sunday. But so what? Jesus is being brought to the temple as any baby Jewish boy would be. Forty days after the birth, and the mother is going to the temple for what we call a purification. It was a male-dominated culture, so it was always the woman who had a little more to do in her life than the man in certain areas. So she was, quote, unclean until she presented the child in the temple, and she came in for her purification rituals. They still have very similar rituals like that in, uh, in uh, Jerusalem and is Israel as well. But we're not Israelites, we are Christians. So what we see, when we see the little baby being brought into the temple, is his human family presenting him to God, as the rituals would, would dictate. But the human kid, little baby, is being revealed to, to us and, of course, Simeon and Anna and everyone around as something more than just a little baby, another little baby boy. This baby boy will become the light of all nations. I can't imagine what was going through Mary and Joseph's mind as Simeon and Anna were talking about baby Jesus and holding him up. and You know, like any, <clears throat> any mother and father would be delighted with the fuss made over your baby when you br bring him to church, as, as we do for baptisms. When I see a family gathering after Mass, after the, uh, the late Mass, on Sundays, sometimes we have baptisms, and I'll go over to the family, and I'll, of course you know who's being baptized, the one that's all in white, and I'll make a fuss, because it's, it's a joy to make a fuss over someone coming into the church. So this past week, I think the boy was like uh, this big. So he was a little older, all dressed in white. So we made a fuss. I made a fuss over him. And then Father Peter came out and baptized him. So that piece is very understandable. They bring the kid to church, and everybody's making a fuss. But there's a greater deal going on here. Because God has revealed to, to Simeon, the old man, prophet, you might say, who's in the temple, that he's not going to die. He's, his eyes are not going to close in death until he sees the revelation of Israel. He doesn't know what that is until that child comes in. 
and the Holy Spirit inspires Simeon to go over to that child and say to God, okay, God, you can close my eyes. I've seen it all. I, that's it. This is the light of Israel's right here. I can die now happy. Anna comes across, and she's impressed by the child Jesus and the rituals that are going on. And if she talks about him to everybody around and says how wonderful this kid is, but again, go to the head of Mary and Joseph. What was going on? Yeah, did Mary remember the Annunciation? Did she remember that she would be uh, the mother of the Most High? Did she remember that the messenger said that this kid's name is going to be Jesus because Jesus means Savior? I guess it came back. But just put yourselves, we can put ourselves in the scriptures for that day when it happened. The joy, the mixed messages, the happiness, the, the sadness, and the key to the sadness is the prediction. This kid's not an ordinary kid. He's going to cause the rise and fall of many. Who wants, who wants that title attached to their son? And he says to Mary, mark my words, you will be pierced so that the, the, the dreams and fears and, and aspirations of many will be laid bare. And her heart was pierced at, at the cross, not physically, but at the cross, I'm sure. I'm sure her heart was pierced when the kid got lost in the temple. I'm sure her heart was, was pierced when she saw him carrying the cross to Calvary. I'm sure her heart was pierced when, when people denied him and, and, and betrayed him. Yeah, her heart was pierced. But the faith that she had, and we only presume this because she never denied Jesus. She stayed with him right to the end and buried him. The faith that she had in the word of the angels the word of the messengers, the word of God, the word of the Holy Spirit, kept her strong. And although her heart was broken a few times in her lifetime, because of this very special son, she stayed strong, stayed faithful. And now we know why we, we call her blessed among women and that her name will never be forgotten as long as the church exists. Because that woman followed the mandate of the Holy Spirit. And that woman stayed faithful to God through all the ups and downs of this son who was the cause of the rise of, uh, and fall of many in Israel. And that son is ours. That son is Jesus Christ. Candles, light. Enlightenment. Light of the world, Jesus Christ. And, <clears throat> and you, can't, you can't just make this stuff up. I mean, you could believe it, put it aside. You can read it, put it aside. But if we follow it with our hearts, that Jesus became God, became a human being to better understand us, to get, to get a grip of our lives, to walk in our footsteps. Once we make that leap of faith, nothing should hold us back in following him as the light of the world. And we can always talk about what his whole mission was all about to the poor and to the, those who are marginalized, but right now let's focus on him as light of the world, as enlightening us when we pray, as enlightening us when we pray for others, as enlightening us when we do charity, as enlightening us when we read the scriptures, as enlightening us as we go through life. He's right there with us. Jesus Christ, light of the world, presented today to the world.